Welcome to the Injured Gadgets YouTube channel. Today we'll be doing an S9 disassembly and reassembly. We'll start by putting it on our CPB heating pad at 75 degrees Celsius for anywhere from 4 to 6 minutes. Now we'll use our iFlex opening tool to remove the adhesive holding the glass back onto the frame. I'll usually open it from the bottom since there's less of a chance of ripping the flex cable on the glass back. Now we can remove the screws holding the plastic backing onto the frame before removing that as well. Next, using some tweezers or a nylon spudger, you can pry the plastic backing up. It should come free fairly easily. And this top part includes the NFC coil, and the bottom part here includes the loudspeaker. I went to remove the SIM card tray, but this being a demo phone, it was already removed. You will, however, need to remove it to get the main board out. But now we can disconnect the battery, and I already disconnected the proximity sensor. After the battery comes the front camera disconnection and removal, followed by the LCD flex cable and the dock flex cable. Now we can remove the antenna wire cables, here this blue one and here the white one. Now before removing the motherboard, there is this one last anchor screw to remove. Now the main board will lift out, and we only need to worry about removing the uh, main dock flex connector. Now that the main board is out, we can remove the rear camera, so we'll just disconnect it, and then using some blunt nose tweezers, you can wheel your way in there and pry it loose. Now we can remove the screws holding the dot connector and headphone jack in. To remove the dot connector, you can start by pulling lightly on this flex cable, making sure the headphone jack is disconnected, and it should come free most of the way, but to remove the part around the headphone jack, you will need a nylon spudger to kind of pry it up lightly, usually bringing the headphone jack with it. Now to remove the proximity sensor, you can simply slice through the copper tape 
and pry it up. It should come free fairly easily. And next is the ear speaker. There's a little notch in the side there where you can fit in some blunt nose tweezers and just wiggle and pry it loose. It may take some work as the adhesive is usually pretty strong. Lastly, we come to the vibrator. You can pry underneath those two metal contact pads and it comes free quite easy. Now that completes our disassembly, so if you were going to be changing the screen, you would simply put all these parts into the new screen with frame, which we do have on our website. Now we'll start with the ear speaker replacement first, and then the proximity sensor. They simply slot back into their spots that they were removed from. Next, we will fit the dot connector back into place and the headphone jack. And then we can replace the screws holding it all in place. Now before replacing the main board, we will need to fit the uh, dock antenna flex back into the side of the housing here. I recommend using a nylon spudger and there's a little hook in there that will hold it. So you simply just fit it back under that hook and it should stay. Lastly, before replacing the motherboard, we will put the rear camera back on. It simply fits back into place and you just connect the flex. Now to replace the vibrator before replacing the main board. Now when replacing the main board you will firstly need to reconnect the main dock flex down here and then making sure all the other cables are pushed out of the way, it should simply lay back down into the frame. Now to reconnect the proximity sensor and put the front camera back in before reconnecting it. Then we can reconnect the main LCD flex and the dock antenna flex. Now this is one of those wire cable type connectors, so it is a little tricky. You kind of have to fight with it sometimes. Now before reconnecting these wire cables, we'll just make sure they're tucked down into their nook alongside the battery here. And these are wire cables, so their connector type is a little troublesome at times. It takes me a minute to get it reconnected here.
Once those are connected, we'll just make sure the wires are tucked neatly in their nook. And then we can move on to replacing the plastic backing. And actually, I would recommend replacing the top part first, as the way the top and bottom pieces fit together, it makes it a little difficult if you put in the bottom part first. Before putting the top part on, we'll replace that one anchor screw that goes on the main board right next to the vibrator and power cable. And now the top part along with the NFC coil we can fit back on there. As you can see here, I'm having some trouble, like I said, when putting the top part on last. But it fits into place after a short while. Now to replace the glass backing, we'll use our two millimeter red tape, also available on our website. And you can pretty much just cover each side in a stripe or two. I used it a little bit lightly, you could do two stripes without issue. Now here I'm simply removing the backing of the tape, uh, it is double sided so just removing the backing before reapplying the glass back. Now before resealing the glass back, this flex cable here will need to be reconnected for the Touch ID. Now I couldn't really find a good way to connect it and show you guys me connecting it. So it kind of just takes some time, and you do have to kind of fight with it, given that it is a very awkward position. But once you get it connected, you can just press down the backing, and you are good to go. Now to show you guys the working device, um, I will say that this was a demo phone, so it came to us with corrupted binaries, so all we're going to get is a, you know, please reinstall authorized binary screen. But as you can see, the screen does work, and the dock does work since it's plugged in. And with that, we complete our S9 screen replacement video. Thanks again for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe if you found this helpful.